<laughs> just talking about conflict re resolution and mediation, which is one of the headings. Um, mediation, for those of you who don't know, um, and this is there's loads of definitions, but I've just um, took out one of them, which is attempt to bring about a peaceful um, res a settlement or compromise through an objective intervention of a neutral party. Uh, as I said um, just before we had the break, that mediation is something that um, is used a lot um, in the legal world these days, and in fact we're actively encouraged to do so, that if there's any court proceedings ongoing in the county court or the high court, that we have to actually fill out a form um, fairly early on in the process to say, are we considering media alternative dispute resolution, including mediation? If not, why not? And in fact, we could have cost sanctions against us if in fact we've not considered um, mediation or some other sort of um, dispute resolution um, before we actually get through to trial. And the, the courts are starting to make cost sanctions now if in fact you haven't done so for good reason. I had a very successful mediation down in London the other week which is to do with a um, two owners of a, of a piece of land, joint owners, and they'd fallen out about what they were going to do about it. Mm -hmm. um, we turned up at half nine, we had a mediator. Um, my clients hated the other client's solicitor, not, the, not his joint partner. He hated his solicitor he used to work with and refused to go anywhere near him, so we had to have them completely the size of the office. And we successfully concluded it at half past midnight, but we concluded it, and I never mm -hmm. thought we would. So it's something that you can do in mediation, which you, you can do things that a court cannot order. Um, so it's always worth considering in any sort of dispute that you have, um, because just having someone completely neutral can quite often work to help and challenge the other side as to what their case is. Because what happens in a mediation, a formal mediation, is that you have a central room that people might meet at the start, but quite often you don't even meet, and the mediator goes between the two parties throughout the day and challenges what they're saying, tries to knock the parties' heads together. Um, so certainly for in my areas of practice, we, we use it quite successfully, and it also keeps down legal costs of going to trial. John, could you give us some, or maybe not today or at another point, some informal mediators that we might draw upon? In well, I can certainly find out from you, because I know housing associations use a lot of informal okay. mediation. Yeah. As to, I don't know what the cost is, because yeah. I don't really get involved in that. Yeah. Um, for formal mediation, um, there is there's some organisations that will do fixed fee mediations. I had one recently, and um, for a half day they charge five hundred pounds. So you're looking at that sort of cost. But five hundred pounds is a lot cheaper than thousands of pounds of court fees. So it depends on how big the issue is you've got and how important it is. I mean, you have some other mediators. The one which the guy was there till half past midnight. I think his total cost for about four or five thousand pound but the overall amount in dispute was 1.9 million, so it was money well spent. So again, it depends on, on what you're actually after. Any views on mediation? Have you experienced it at all? Dave? I must admit, we haven't been through, uh, through mediation. So. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fair, I'm saying it's fairly new. Fairly new in legal terms means it's been going about 10 years, so for a lot of people it's, it's still fairly new. Um, but there's been more and more of an emphasis in the last two or three years um, for the legal profession that we have to consider it more, or we're being forced to whether we like it or not. I've done it on a personal level, and it is really good. Really yeah, they do it a lot in family disputes and divorce. Um, there's a lot of mediation goes on now, again, to try and keep down legal costs. Yeah, I think two conditions are required for mediation. One is both one should have the yeah. conflict resolved, so that's not always the case. No. And um, I think both parties need to be prepared to kind of give a little. So both parties need to be prepared, as the name implies, to meet in the middle. That's right. And, I think uh, that's not uh, not always uh, a route to go, but um, mm -hmm. it can very often be. Yeah. No, you're completely right about that, and you may find that there's the I mean the mediator the, of the mediation that I had in London the other week, and he said one he'd had a few weeks before is that the mediation only actually lasted half an hour, because the guy had turned up and wanted to tick the box to say to the court that he had actually turned up for mediation but had no intention of actually participating actively in that mediation. But that's quite rare, I've never actually had that happen. Um, but a, a successful mediation means both parties walked away, probably not ecstatic, maybe relieved that they haven't got the court process to be worried about in the future, and that they can live with whatever the agreement is and walk away and move on with their life. That generally is the view, I think. If they think they're completely hard done by, they won't actually agree to the, the terms of settlement that have been proposed. And the best thing is it can't be appealed, so you know it's really over with. There's no, yeah. There's no, there's no second round of going to court of appeals. Yeah. And yeah. 
That's right. But the beauty for me for medi- mediation is that you can agree all sorts of things that you wouldn't be able to agree on as part of the court process and ask a judge to make an order on. So that's why I find it really useful for that reason.